New account, check. Playing hit scan, check. Landing a suspicious amount of headshots just to then fire into walls to decrease their scoped accuracy? Hold on a second, this isn't just a smurf, this is a cheater! If you're somebody who still tries to rank up in current year, then smurf accounts are probably the bane of your existence. The thirst for SR is strong in every rank, and once a mercy player realizes that somebody is hitting more shots than usual, things can get incredibly obnoxious incredibly quickly. So what if I told you that there are means and ways of annoying the heck out of them? I mean, let's be real, you're not gonna win every fight against somebody doing that 25th unranked to GM challenge, but if there is a chance for payback, I'm certain that many of you are gonna wanna take it. But how do you annoy somebody who's much better than you? Well, my friends, that is the question that I'm planning to answer today, just like I'm going to answer the question of who our sponsor for today is. That one's easy, Surfshark VPN. At this point, I want to genuinely thank you guys for supporting me all throughout 2021. Despite a dwindling interest in Overwatch and by proxy my content, you guys kept smashing the sponsor link, which has led to Surfshark signing the contract for another year. I don't often take the opportunity to talk bluntly about this, but Surfshark support has made all the difference to me last year. It allowed me to continue to make content without having to worry about bankruptcy, and the fact that they keep coming back to work with me means that a lot of you guys actually find their service useful. And why wouldn't you? Being able to hide your IP and change your identity comes with a lot of great benefits. Anywhere from making use of regional pricing, to my personal favorite of accessing region lot content, chances are you can find use in a Surfshark subscription. Better yet, you can do so on the cheap. You can save 83% on your subscription and get 3 extra months for free, simply by using my link in the description below and using my promo code CLIFTERIOS. After over a year of these ad spots, I'm sure many of you already know the drill. Thank you everybody so much for your support, thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video, and now, onto our standard programming. Now one thing you have to know right from the get-go, fighting a competent smurf is and always will be a team effort. I think a lot of people are aware of that, but they go about it the completely wrong way. Well for starters, you gotta find the smurf in the first place. Duffley, who submitted this replay, decided to swiftly show us how to go about identifying one such player. Yep, I think they found them. Now ignoring the animation glitch courtesy of the replay system, it doesn't take a lot of wrinkles on your brain to understand that something is fishy when a fresh level 30 hitscan DPS opens up a match by landing two instant headshots back to back in Platinum. Our Genji God Q-Dub made use of Duffley's sacrifice to immediately find and target Tony the Smurf, a well-timed deflect turned their aim against them and all it took then was to finish them off. And while they're at it, they also made sure that the enemy Mercy could not resurrect them. Thanks to that Genji taking care of that pesky Smurf, the rest of their team could focus on the brawl around the objective. The enemy Junkrat was not about to die like their Lucio did and made a desperate effort to yeet back into their spawn, though Genji had no intention of giving them that kind of luxury. But Tony was already back on his feet and he was determined to stop the stagger train, first taking out the team soldier before taking to the high ground. That elimination did not go unnoticed, and Genji tried to repeat what they did a minute earlier, but unfortunately Junkrat as well as Mercy ensured that their smurf would live to carry them. And that is exactly what he did. While Tony continued to lay into our heroes, his tank line made sure that they could not take cover from the onslaught of headshots raining down on them. And sadly, this is where the real trouble began. Long sightlines plus a Mercy pocket meant that the red team could not take as much as a step towards the payload without getting domed. And to make matters worse, the rest of Tony's team decided to stop sitting on their hands and actually contributed to the fights, making it ever the more devastating. The fear of getting headshot out of spawn was written all over Duffley and his friends as every new attempt at capturing the objective became more and more timid. If it was only Tony that they had to deal with, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad, but even without him doing much at all, the rest of the defenders knew how to keep their advantage going. The red team was desperate to close the distance and take care of the enemy sniper, but the defenders were hell-bent on making sure that did not happen. While a sleep dart was enough to keep their monkey at bay, the blue team had no hesitation to invest a Graviton in order to ensure that this Nanoblade would not reach their Widowmaker. Things were not looking good for our friends over here, 50 seconds left on the clock and most of their big hitting ultimates had just gone up in smoke during the last fights. It would take nothing short of a miracle for them to stay in this game. Or would it? After having spent the last three minutes dominating over the attackers, the blue team started to get a little overzealous. Get Good decided to get a bit creative and made an attempt to diff their Reinhardt counterpart just to end up diff themselves. Without their main tank at the helm, the defenders fell apart in a hurry. Our monkey finally found an opportunity to dive that annoying Widow Smurf to not only distract but take them out. Obviously, the resurrection was imminent, and annoying as it must be for Duffley to get domed right away again, he could rest assured knowing that his monkey had no intention of letting that Widowmaker play the game any longer. The red team made the impossible possible. What seemed like an impenetrable shield had been shattered into a thousand pieces, allowing our heroes to capture the first point to keep themselves in the game. But the game wasn't won just yet, and Genji decided that it was their purpose in life to keep that smurf occupied no matter the cost. Duffley had since made this up to Lucio and figured it made sense to help out. Everyone was well aware of Tony punching above his weight, and as such, some sacrifices had to be made in order to keep them at bay. Though that did come at the cost of forsaking the objective, which the rest of the defenders had 
no trouble reclaiming. But hey, don't think about what we lost, think about what we gained. Annoying the crap out of that Widow Smurf. But that's fine, because our hero is well ready to go on the offensive once again, fearlessly charging under the bridge before the enemy Widow can come back. Though getting booped off was probably not part of the plan. Thankfully, Veilu did not follow Duffy into the river and used the opportunity for a surprise attack from the back. If Genji was the red team's reliable carry, then their Reinhardt was undeniably a wild card that could swing the course of battle in an instant. The enemy Widowmaker came back just in time for a Hansa to welcome them with a Dragon Strike, another tool used to annoy them and break their spirit. But of course, Genji and Winston made sure that where the dragon was just an annoyance, the following dive would hit the nail in the coffin and send them back to spawn. Our heroes had finally cracked the code. The goal is not to just full send it into the smurf, it's to dismantle the supporting structure around them. If all you do is trying to go for one player, it is even easier for the enemy team to focus all their resources on keeping them alive. But if you first take out their teammates, there's nobody to help them out. The only downside with that approach is that usually it comes at the cost of, well, somebody. Chances are somebody's gonna bite the dust in response to that performance while you fiddle your way into an elimination. But if you remain patient, figure out their playstyle and make sure to strike at the right time, you can become a real thorn in their side. Smurfing players hate dying to somebody who's lower rank than them, so the more often you can make that happen, the more likely they are to make mistakes themselves. Now I wish I could tell you that our heroes successfully kept up the pace and completed the map while continuously beating Tony, but at the end of the day, this is a platinum ranked match with platinum ranked players who make platinum ranked mistakes. The red team was stopped just shy of the second point capture, which while frustrating, is way further than I initially thought they could get based on the first point. Now all that is left to see is if they can improve their performance on defense so if they fall victim to the smurf once and for all. Duffley's team had taught us a few very valuable lessons on their attack round already, but there'll be more lessons needed to confirm victory in this match against all odds. Tony had shown some very odd behavior in which he repeatedly used his downtime to shoot walls and the like following what was a streak of headshots. Now I am no scientist, but few players try to decrease their scoped accuracy besides those of the cheating variety. And if it turns out that Tony truly is cheating, then the rage hack could be incoming the better our heroes get at combating him. Well, he was definitely gonna make his presence known by immediately kicking the second round off with a headshot. The blue team must have learned to respect their opposition rather than solely relying on Tony's performance. Their approach was very methodical as they tested out the limits of the red team's defenses. It really felt like Good Good had a chip on their shoulder though as they seemed insistent to challenge Veilu to a Reinhardt vs Reinhardt battle, one which they had to forsake sooner than they would have liked to do to a dwindling health pool. But disaster struck when the blue team's Doomfist yeeted into a hero's backline to assassinate Duffley just after Zana had been headshot. q reacted too slow slowly to prevent the kill, and even though they eventually took out the enemy sniper, a Venomine will be their downfall while Tony got resurrected before his body even hit the floor. Yeah, there wasn't a heck of a lot of resistance to the blue team's first offense, the headshots kept raining down on our heroes while the payload continued to move forward. And yes, I mean that quite literally, because Tony wasn't about to let Duffley and his friends regroup, taking an angle to fire into their spawn to make things even more difficult. Now as much as I don't want to step on Kefri's turf by engaging in some 0.25 action, but there were definitely some very odd looking shots came from Tony during that fight, do with that information as you will. Duffley's second DPS Mota eventually realized that they couldn't expect their Genji to do all the work when it comes to combating that Widow. Putting themselves in the line of fire, this hounds them at use of the only thing that can help a genuine Platinum player defeat a smurf, broken projectile hitboxes. Tony was taken care of, but the front line still had to be secured. Veilu was making use of their wild card nature to bait the blue team into dropping their guard to begin laying down the smack and cleaning house. Not only was Gid good getting diffed yet again, Again, but this right now was going on a rampage. Any attempt to escape their clutches was absolutely futile and like a miracle, our heroes had successfully stopped the payload before the first checkpoint. Duffley and his friends were determined to do more than just annoy Tony at this stage. They were planning to turn things around and stop the enemies where previously they had almost been stopped themselves. The strategy was rather simple. The sightlines might be long, but Tony would have to go through no less than two barriers as well as solid bricks to confirm an elimination. That meant if the red team wanted to win this fight, they would have to do so without relying on their Widowmaker. But we already knew that this is something they are capable of. Ultimate combos is the name of the game as they Graviton paved the way for a Meteor Strike to delete the blue team's support line. This match, however, was never about the supports, it was about the DPS. Genji had read Tony like an open book and turned his aim against him with a deflect yet again before turning their attention to the choke point. If you thought that q Dub was being too quiet in the last few fights, then I'm sure this Dragon Blade is going to alleviate your concerns as they sliced and diced their way to another victorious team fight. 
Wait, could they do it? Could they actually full hold the team that, by all accounts, was rolling and smoking them just a few minutes prior? Is victory actually in reach? Well, if it is, it's definitely not gonna be at the stroke point because the blue team just brute forced their way past it without investing more than a beat drop and a doomfist as a decoy. Just to remind us that this is still a platinum ranked game. Keep that in mind as you watch this Zarya tunnel vision on trying to eliminate Duffley in sheer disregard of the fact that several of his teammates were alive to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, I'm gonna level with you guys. The rest of this match was kind of a clown fiesta. Good Good took every opportunity to teabag Veilu because when they couldn't match the Rhine 1v1, they had to swap to D.Va for even a chance of getting payback. At the end, there was that ego trip that made them teabag Veilu again in the last fight rather than finishing the game and claiming victory before overtime. We had some great stalling moves coming from Duffley on Lucio and a surprise hero swap from Q-Dub to spearhead their comeback. Ultimately, it was our heroes who stood victorious at the end, having not only annoyed but defeated Tony the Smurf. And as a way to thank all of you who watched this episode all the way to the end, I have a bit of a secret to share with you guys. You remember the Sea of Thieves videos I made a while back? Yeah, I decided to make a second channel specifically to continue that series. There are three brand new episodes of life on that channel right now, in addition to a super cut of all the old episodes that you've already seen on my main channel. So if you're down for weekly Sea of Tales in addition to my Overwatch stories, make sure to check out that channel. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and until next time!